made the right choice. You're watching El Paso's favorite television station, News Channel 9. This is News Channel 9 tonight. And it starts now. Local teenagers find a cheap and deadly high in a little pill. Border bandits get away from undercover police. And keeping the faith for those struck down by AIDS. Jim? Cool again tonight, but not quite the chill of the past several nights. Your top of the cast forecast, our, our low th uh, tonight, 34 degrees. High tomorrow, 75. Sunny, continued mild in El Paso. The complete forecast coming up. The latest fad drug to hit high schools in El Paso is cheap, accessible, and dangerous. Good evening, I'm Nick Miller. I'm Erica Castillo. It's a drug narcotics experts describe as a kind of Valium, which is a tranquilizer or a downer, and it can kill. News Channel 9's Raymond Mesa has this Target 9 report. That's the way you act. You're, you act like if you're drunk. They tell me what I did, and I was like, no, I, I can't be doing that. These two teenage girls are talking about the effects of this small pill, a drug that teenagers say has found its way into several schools here in our area. They call the drug Rochis, La Rocha, Rope, or Roches. The teens we spoke with tell us this is one of the more common ones, Levodromeran, a synthetic analgesic with properties similar to morphine. You put it in your mouth, and it dissolves, and... Less than 30 seconds here, out. Both teens say they tried the pills because of peer pressure. According to Nina, the pills are easy to get at school, but even more available near her home. It's like $2 here, but in some places they sell them for a dollar. There's a lot of people you could get it anywhere. At Isleta High School, officials are tackling the problem head on by educating the parent and the teachers as well. We uh, sent a memo to the teachers explaining the uh, drug itself and the effects of it, and if they do find a student in their classroom, to please send them to the office or to the nurse. Their speech is slurred, uh, their balance, uh, they're off balance, and um, they can't remember a lot of things, and it's details about their addresses or phone numbers or things like that, and uh, it, it's hard for them to focus their eyes. The Mexican government is also doing its part to get the drugs off the street by arresting drug users and pushers. They've gone a step further and prohibited the sale of the pills at all pharmacies. The problem is there are already a lot of pills out here on the street. Many of those will wind up back in our schools and many more students will be experimenting with the drug, not knowing the dangers that they face. According to medical information we received from the U.S. Customs Service, an overdose of these pills can put you in a coma and even kill you. So the best advice we can give you is to stay away from the drugs and resist peer pressure. Raymond Mesa, News Channel 9 tonight. The FBI is looking for a man accused of robbing a central El Paso bank on Tuesday. The suspect is 29-year-old Gerald Williams. Police say he's the man who walked into the Texas Commerce Bank on Alameda and handed Teller a note demanding money. Williams is described as Hispanic, 5 feet 6 inches tall, with brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information is asked to call the FBI or the El Paso Police Department, the numbers you see there on the screen. El Paso Police say Williams is also wanted in connection with the robberies of several other businesses. Border bandits are on video again, this time attacking a vehicle on Paisano that's different from the others. It's occupied with undercover police officers. Video released by the Border Patrol today shows three people attacking a van parked along the border last night. The vehicle was part of a decoy set up to catch whoever's been terrorizing that area. The police pretended to have engine trouble. They were assaulted with rocks, and one officer was reportedly threatened with a knife. They, uh, they have no respect and no regard for authority whatsoever. Uh, this is not a, a, an immigration problem in itself. It's a, it's a criminal problem. It's an international crime problem. Police say the men ran across the border before they could be apprehended. In Washington tonight, Republicans have their defense spending package, and with strings attached, President Clinton has the money for his Bosnia mission. The spending package approved by Congress this evening will cover costs to send some 20,000 U.S. troops on the proposed Bosnia peacekeeping mission. But President Clinton says the $243 billion package is $7 billion overpriced. He says he'll sign it only because it covers the costs of troop deployment. Officials in Austin today made it official. Higher speeds are on the way for Texas roads. 
The State Transportation Commission today voted to restore the state's former speed limits. They will allow Texans to drive 70 miles an hour during the day and 65 miles an hour at night on the freeway and rural highways. Texans haven't been able to legally drive that fast since the energy crisis back in the 1970s. The higher speeds take effect when the national speed limit expires, and that's December 8th. Tomorrow is World AIDS Day, and tonight, in honor of it, an interfaith worship service was held at Trinity First United Methodist Church. Worshippers say when a person is stricken with AIDS, the disease does not discriminate. People of all faiths are at risk. Tonight's service brought together varied religious groups which honored and offered support for families that have been affected by that fatal disease. Uh, one of the things that, that they may not have access to is, is some type of a, a spiritual comfort, you know, and, uh, and that's real important. Here in El Paso, the Texas Department of Health reports that 521 people have been diagnosed with AIDS. So far, 290 have died. On the eve of World AIDS Day, the federal government is launching a slick new awareness campaign aimed at stopping the spread of AIDS. The ads feature young adults talking about buying condoms, condoms or avoiding sex. The spots are catchy and are creating some controversy. Sylvia Molina, an AIDS educator for the Catholic Diocese of El Paso, says promoting condom use is wrong and not a deterrent. Molina says the numbers tell the story. Texas were like 17,000 plus. Now we're in 1995, and AIDS cases are at 35,000. So obviously we need something more than a condom issue. We need an alternative choice for people. And abstinence seems to be what is going to work. Members of the Southwest AIDS Committee say abstinence is the most effective measure, but it's unrealistic to think many people will practice it. They say promoting condom use is a must, not only to stop the spread of AIDS, but also to curb El Paso's high teen pregnancy rate. Author Norman Mailer was in the Sun City tonight discussing his life and his works. Mailer has had numerous successes with his writings, which include two Pulitzer Prizes. He's been writing since he was in college, but he majored in engineering. He says he was never interested in the 18th century English poets, and if he switched majors, he said he wouldn't have had time to write. Mailer talked about his life and signed autographs for his newest book called Portrait of Picasso as a Young Man. Next on News Channel 9, a man in New York is dumped on from above. <laughs> and the miraculous rescue of a marine at sea. And elsewhere in the news tonight, House Speaker Newt Gingrich says charges that he received $250,000 in illegal campaign contributions from an organization under his control are false. The Federal Elections Commission made those charges today. Michigan Democrat David Bonier says he'll file a new ethics complaint against Gingrich, and he accused the House Ethics Committee of trying to cover up the investigation. 20-year-old Marine Corporal Zachary Mayo is alive and well tonight after an incredible story of survival. On Saturday night, he fell overboard from an aircraft carrier in the Arabian Sea. Using Marine survival techniques, he floated in the water for 36 hours while Marine and Navy planes searched, and a fisherman finally rescued him. He then telephoned his parents in Idaho from Pakistan. And Ann Landers is taking some of her own advice tonight after an offhand remark many consider a racist slur against the Pope. In an interview with the New Yorker magazine, she praises the Pope as being angelic looking, but then goes on to say he's a, quote, Polak, and then laughingly said that they're anti-women. Ann Landers apologized this afternoon, saying that she deserves 40 lashes with a wet noodle. A man in Buffalo, New York, believes the dirty brown stuff that splattered his home this week was human waste from up above. Paul Bruner was at home early Tuesday morning when he heard the substance falling. He believes it was dropped from a passing plane, probably one that had just taken off from the airport a half mile away. The county health department is examining the stuff, but Bruner says he already knows what it is. You know damn well where it came from. It came from an airplane. And they're trying to tell me, well, what makes you think, you know, that it came from an airplane? Well, God, it didn't come from Santa Claus and his reindeers or the flying nun. You know, it's, it's very obvious. Uh, it would take more than one team of reindeer to paint this house the way they did, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not that guy? A spokesman with the Federal Aviation Administration says dumping waste from a flight is illegal, but it occasionally happens. Well, I hope Santa doesn't uh, take any clues from that. 
And I hope Jim Gamble doesn't have a forecast that calls for any of that falling from the sky. No, I hope not. <laughs> well, there may be a little stuff in the air tonight, but not that stuff. We're talking about the maybe a little pollution developing overnight. Stay with us. I'll have the full forecast when we come back. Welcome to Movie News. I'm Rob Weller. This weekend, Walt Disney Pictures' Toy Story was number one at the box office as moviegoers sold out theaters coast to coast to see the world's first fully computer-animated feature film. There seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Oh, yes! ah! Toy Story is now playing. And you can also visit Toy Story online at www.toystory.com. Steve Martin and the entire original cast are back again for Father of the Bride Part 2. Kids, you're gonna have a baby. Excuse me? He's uh, looking forward to those kind of calmer years. And then there's upheaval. Honey, I need to know how you feel about all this. I feel super about it. At least going to the movies, that'll be economical. One child, two seniors, thanks. Father of the Bride Part 2 starts Friday, December 8th. For Movie News, I'm Rob Wallace. Emergency crews right now are in one of El Paso's industrial areas working a possible carbon monoxide leak. News Channel Line's Yvette Alvarez joins us live now with more. Yvette, just what is happening out there now? Are we live? Nick, Erica, I'm here at the Inner Pack Company in excuse me, in the industrial area of, of El Paso. Now, what we know is that 21 employees had to be evacuated this evening because of carbon mon monoxide. Now, the fire department's scanner or reader, I didn't get the exact name, we were so rushed, read, says that when it's 35, that means it's dangerous. It was reading 165. We spoke with some employees who have been in the, who were evacuated from the building. Now, they said they were feeling nauseated yesterday and that people were sent home this morning and then now that they had to be evacuated. They're all being examined right now. So apparently nobody has been uh, injured that we know of, but the uh, medical people are, are taking a look at that. And that obviously happened late this evening. Yvette got out there with just enough time to gather up that little information that we could. So if we mm -hmm. hear any other news, we'll be sure to let we'll you let know. We'll let you know. But now, time to check in with Jim Gamble for that forecast. What an incredible weather pattern we're seeing over the El Paso area. It's going to stay that way uh, probably for quite some time to come. In fact, right now skies are clear in El Paso. It is 55 degrees. Now, we're not going to see the chill uh, that we've seen over the past several nights where we've been getting down uh, to or actually slightly below the freezing mark. Should stay just above that tonight. Humidity 34 percent, dew point at 27, south winds at 9. Watering on the even address side of the street, wood burning is okay. Satellite picture, fair skies along the uh, southeastern section of the country, but some low clouds lingering from eastern Tennessee northward into western Pennsylvania, western New York. A few light flurries this morning and some light flurries uh, throughout parts of uh, Michigan earlier today. We put the map into motion, though. Look how quickly these clouds are advancing to the east. The jet stream running basically uh, in a zonal flow. That's what we call it when it's running west to east across the country. And it is well north of El Paso, as you can see. Uh, the clouds continue working across the Rockies and into the plains, dissipating somewhat. This little storm system right here is rather weak in nature, but it is helping to uh, fuel a few showers this evening. Most of it in the liquid form throughout uh, southern sections uh, of Michigan on into northern Illinois. Chicago seeing rain right now. A little bit of an icy mix uh, in uh, sections of northern West Virginia and on up into uh, New York State. It turns to light snow. Back to the west, some rain showers continuing in the Pacific Northwest. In fact, uh, the flood warnings for the Snoqualmie River just south of Seattle continue for tonight as the flood uh, stages continue to rise uh, on that river. Now, the rains will continue over much of the Pacific Northwest, and the snows will continue to move on to the east. High pressure is in control over the southeastern portion of the country. This clockwise flow picking up some warmer air off the Gulf of Mexico and pushing it back northward again into the Great Lakes area, and that's why the precipitation is in the liquid form tonight. Fair skies over the desert southwest, and a few showers in the Pacific Northwest, complements of high pressure. It's clockwise rotation, pulling in lots of Pacific moisture, and that will continue to be the case probably for the next several days to come. Now, across the borderland for tomorrow, it's going to be very, very nice. 
Uh, this is uh, the kind of weather that, uh, well, some folks don't want to see, but some do. 72 Alamogordo, 50 Cloudcroft, 60 Ruidoso, Las Cruces 73, 74 Deming, 71 in Silver City, Albuquerque tomorrow 69, 60 in Santa Fe. Now, El Paso, our high temperature this afternoon didn't quite hit the 70 degree mark. Thought it would be just a little warmer than that. 69 for the high this morning's low, 31. The uh, record high, 74, 1970. Record low, 9 above zero, 1976 after that big snowstorm. The uh, forecast for El Paso for tonight, low of 34, clear skies, high tomorrow, 75, lots of sunshine, west winds 5 to 15. Extended outlook, 76 on Saturday, 75 on Sunday and Monday. 74 degrees on Tuesday. So the weather pattern is stuck. Uh, it's kind of like a broken record. It's just over and over and over again. Well, it's a nice tune. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Christmas season is fast approaching, and postal workers are also gearing up for another very busy season. And again, they say sending your Christmas packages now will save you time and money. U.S. postal workers say it will cost you about $8 more to send packages express mail rather than parcel post. And you can avoid long lines if you mail now. There is still good news for people waiting until the last minute, though. For the first time in the history of the U.S. Postal Service, doors will be open on Sunday, the 10th, the 17th, and Christmas Eve. The Sunday opening is between 10 and 2 at Pebble Hills, Coronado, Northgate, and the Paisano Post Office. And I'll bet they'll be busy that entire time. All the way to the last <laughs> minute. Yep, and I'll be there. <laughs> Coming next in medical news, seasonal depression. Some of the problems of the holiday season. It looks like something from Star Trek, but patients claim it helps them over their depression. Next on Family Health, we'll show you what can combat those winter blues that may creep in soon. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, nearly 18 million people suffer from depression. But there's another type of depression that strikes in the fall. It's called the Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD. In tonight's Family Health Report, we find out how, as the days get shorter, the blues start to set in. Here's News Channel 9's Dr. Manny Alvarez. For Sally Swope, a relaxing day is a day in the garden. But about a year ago, she didn't even want to get out of bed. I started to feel like I was having real difficulty getting up in the morning. And this was by noontime. I was really having a hard time getting going. She was suffering from depression, an illness that affects four out of five of her family members. Sally's was brought on by news that her father was dying. Her eating patterns, sexual drive, and sleep were all disturbed. One of the first things that is seen in the more severe types of depression is sleep disturbance. It's almost the hallmark of, uh, of a depressive episode. She started taking medication, but her doctor also recommended this device, a light visor. Researchers say the intense light speeds up the body's reactions to medications. The type of light that's in the, in the visor is just like daylight, uh, minus ultraviolet bands. How does it work? The eyes process the light, which then stimulates melatonin, a hormone that acts as the body's natural clock. By regulating the clock, melatonin also regulates moods. For Sally, the visor meant she could work and be treated for 30 minutes a day at the same time. Oh, I'm just fine now. I mean, it was a year ago, and you know, I haven't had any kind of episode since then. The next step of research is to determine if the light visor can be used alone, without medication to cure the depression. With the News Channel 9 Family Health Report, I'm Dr. Manny Alvarez. A big trade in the NBA and a big ball game at the Special Events Center. The I-10 rivalry is resumed. Aggies against the Miners. Fred Albers is next with News Channel 9 Sports. So, was it broom time for the Miners tonight? <laughs> sweep, sweep, sweep. <laughs> that is what happened. Yes, it is time to break out those brooms. A clean sweep for Utah. For the first time in seven years, the Miners have taken a pair of games from New Mexico State, beating the Aggies tonight, 77 to 70. News Channel 9's Paul Zimmerman standing by in the newsroom. Paul, I thought that the Aggies, even though they lost, actually played better at the Special Events Center than they did up in Las Cruces. Miners had a hard time putting New Mexico State away tonight. Oh, yeah. Aggies looked a little nervous on Monday night, a little more settled uh, this time around. Don Haskins is expecting a tougher game. He got exactly that. Let's check it out. Two coaches getting together for a little shake before things started. More than a thousand wins between these two guys. 
Things starting fast for the Miners. Little turnover. Kamani's got it. Push it ahead. Why not? Mark Ingles. Go, babe. Lays it up. 18 for Marky Mark. Aggies counter from the outside. Chewy Johnson for three. Neil wants better defense. He gets it tonight. Call gets stripped in traffic ahead to Sean Harrington. Shaky with 21 to lead the Ags. The Miners in crashing the boards. Kevin Beal. He had 11 boards and 13 points, but just before the break, Jamal Kendrick going to stick it in, and it's the Aggies by two at intermission, 33-31. Don Haskins trying to get it together, but uh-oh, little trouble, and that's Enoch going to jam? No. No jams in this game. But then here comes Kamani. He scored 19. Go on, kiss it off the glass and put it in, and Carl Davis lining up for three. He had 19 as well. Four long balls for Carl. And then with under two minutes to go, Mark Ingles, high pressure shot, turns around and knocks it down. UTEP by six. Aggies cut it to three, and then Boscan Levon. Four threes in the game. Can he tie it up? Uh uh. Miners hit 13 straight free throws down the stretch, and the fans like it as they go on to win 77 to 70. Don Haskins now 3 and 0 on the year. You know, really, it's uh, the way we played. It's 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 a good win. And uh, it's very difficult to play a team uh, twice in four or five days. You know, we still didn't um, play too well tonight, but, um, you know, we'll take the win either way we can get it. Um, um, we just um, held on there at the end and um, just pulled it through. Uh, I think it's shown that we are we're poised in all, in all situations being down uh, when we're up. I think that's important in the future for the WAC. Yeah, Wax a long time off, but the Miners starting the season playing very well on the boards. They beat the Aggies by 11 in the rebounding department tonight. Meanwhile, New Mexico State 0-2 for the first time in 21 years, Fred. Maybe the Aggies get in the win column this Saturday night when they host Western New Mexico. The Miners at the Special Events Center are trying to continue that good start. Miners hosting Northwestern State Saturday night. Thank you, News Channel 9's Paul Zimmerman. A big trade in NBA tonight. The New York Jersey Nets send Derek Coleman to Philadelphia in a deal involving six players. Coleman goes to Philly along with Sean Higgers and Rex Walters. The Nets receive seven foot, six inch, six inch center Sean Bradley, the former BYU Cougar, along with Greg Graham and Tim Perry. High school basketball tonight, opening round games for the Athleta School District Tournament at Bel Air. This is Franklin playing Parkland. Cougars on the run. Robert Choto scores. Parkland did a good job, though, getting the ball inside. I'm talking about Gary Dilks. He wants the ball. He wants the basket. He gets both of them. Parkland up by five. Final seconds. That was enough because Jaime Franco's triple at the buzzer only makes the final score a little closer. Parkland wins this 46-44. Other boys' games, the winners include Socorro, Devine, Jefferson, Coronado, Cathedral, Las Cruces, Northeast Christian Academy, and Jesus Chapel lost to St. Mark's of Dallas, 107-54. Some major news out of the Utah football department today. The Miners defensive coordinator, Pete Kaharchek, has resigned. He will take a job with Dusseldorf in the World League of American Football. Miner defense was awful this year, allowing an average of more than 40 points per ball game. That's second worst in the nation. Coach Pete, though, has been with Charlie Bailey a long time, says it was simply time to move on. Well, it's really tough leaving Charlie Bailey because Charlie and I played for Charlie back in the 60s. And I've worked with him, I don't know how many different places and how many years, and Charlie's the greatest guy in the world to work for, and, and I really feel bad leaving. Oh, I, the most attractive thing is I'm going to be an NFL employee. That's the most attractive thing, and, and plus I like working, you know, with professional football. Charlie Bailey had no comment, but will apparently go outside the program to bring in a new defensive coordinator. Thursday night football in the NFL, Giants at Arizona, Buddy Ryan under the heat in Phoenix, but then... So is Dan Reeves up in New York. Cards lead this 6-3 to three in the third when Dave Brown finds Mike Sherrard in the end zone, the former Cowboy. That was the game's only touchdown. Dramatic ending to this one. Cardinals on the 8-yard line. Final seconds, fourth down. But Dave Craig would throw four straight incompletions. Giants beat the Cardinals 10-6. At the PGA Qualifying School down in Florida, El Paso and Paul Stankowski shoots rounds of 66-67. He leads. Good, Great. good shooting. Thanks, sir. We'll be right back. Another quick look at the coolness tonight. Yeah, a little bit cool tonight, but not quite as cool as we've seen the last several nights. Our low in El Paso tonight, about 34 degrees. And as far as the high for tomorrow, well, we're looking at about 75 degrees with mostly sunny skies. So what's new? Another good one. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. The Tonight Show is next here on News Channel 9.